and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we will look at the Sunochi heavy duty ball joints for the Jeep Wrangler JL. In my case, Jeep Wrangler JL Unlimited Sport. And disclaimer, I'm not a mechanic, but we'll do the installation anyways. I did a lot of research. I tried to educate myself as much as I can. I have a friend over who will help me today as well. And hopefully the installation will go flawlessly, but um, I needed some tools which you can rent at AutoZone. I'll show you everything what I'm showing you in the video it will be in the description below in case you want to purchase or you want to rent it. Up to you, maybe you have it already. And you just need this video for educational purpose. And I hope this helps. Uh, I hope I'm not making any mistakes. It's, this is the first time doing it, but I'm very excited and Fingers crossed everything will, everything will go well. I hope I can show you how I'm doing it and maybe it helps you and why I'm doing this. So there was another video up there, installing Apex chassis, tie rod and track link. And it helped tremendously for if there was a little death wobble to mitigate it a lot. So what's left is just when there's a long stretch and it's a curvy on a freeway, for example, and there is some heavy unevenness on the road, some whatever there is on the road, you know, the streets in LA are shit. Surprise. I can feel that there's still some shaking. So kind of a kind of a bump steer, if you want to call it. Um, very minor and it's not leading to death bubble yet. So I want to avoid at any cost that this is happening. Um, still running totally default stock tires, total default suspension. Still shocked that that Jeep still has this problem no further comment but um, i hope that the ball joints even though they were diagnosed to not be the problem i want to be super safe and i want to replace them because i'm around seventy-eight thousand miles and i think it's it's maybe a good time just to do it anyways since uh, the mopar parts in this case they have plastic inside and it might be worn we will check if they have more play than they should and i saw other videos other youtubers and it helped them tremendously or in forums i was reading about that so I want to go the route, I have to go it at one point anyways, and I want to put on bigger tires. So it's just in preparation for that. So I'm not wasting any money here. And the Sunachi heavy duty ball joints, I feel like I'm going a good route with them. That means there are multiple other manufacturers um, out there. But I went with Sunachi because I, so far I don't have any part from Sunachi, but I felt like, no, why not? You know, give it a try. It looks heavy duty, it looks good quality, made in the USA. And that's something which I really adore. And let's start with the video. I'll try to show you a close-up of the heavy-duty ball joints and I try to do step-by-step step as much as possible and all the details I'm doing. So I have a Dana M186 front axle. I just double-checked and that means uh, for your unlimited sport, not a Ruby conversion, but I have a FAD front axle disconnect which we have to take care of on the passenger side. Driver side is just straightforward um, what the video will be. For the passenger side, we need to do one step before we take everything apart. Just to be aware of that, there is a little difference. And if you have some kind of other aftermarket um, axle, I have no idea what's going on, but you might know because you definitely did some more research than I did on that part, probably. That's one thing you have to pay attention for in a video. And the next step will be, I'll show you the parts close up. I'll, we'll talk about it maybe a little bit more and then we'll just jump right into it because I think it's no more talking needed, just show you the steps, what I'm doing to get the ball joints out and press new ones in. Let's get started. So I want to lay out, we will need our ball joints, which do look like this from Synergy. And they come in a pair and one says upper and the other one says lower, like so. And you can see they are both of crease fittings. And according to instructions, which, which also come with this package, both come with grease fittings, you can see here, and it means here is the little package, um, two grease fittings, and let me know those are needle nose fittings, so you might have to get an adapter if you didn't. There's one washer and two counter bits. And of course, yes, you saw, right? They do come with castle nuts, new ones as well, and they come pre-creased according to the instructions. So, what else do you need? You can see it already. I tried to lay it out. This is a massive, big um, press kit, but uh, a small press kit might be sufficient. I just wasn't sure what I need. So I decided I'll go with the slightly bigger one just to make sure I have everything I need. Additionally, I saw in another video from Way Life, that's um, whoop up there. Um, he was using one of those little um, 
not symmetrical shaped uh, press fittings. So uh, I'll link also everything what I'm using in the description below. And as mentioned, there are really good instructions. The Synergies, Synergy did a great job, not only in putting the instructions together, you can also download them, but also they did actually um, record everything very well, very good. And I want to give it a try now, so there we are. I got um, for both sides a set, right and left, and I got, that's maybe one thing I want to point out, um, Synergy offers knurled and not knurled. Those are not knurled, so they're round. In case um, your ball joints did wear out the uh, um, axle assembly on that side where they fit in, you might have to go with knurled. But in my case, I hope this is not a case, so we'll see. Cross the bridge when we get there. So first thing first, we go to the car, jack it up, take the tires off. All right, here you have the entire damage. So what we need to do is take off the caliper and the mount. We need to take off the bra uh, brake rotor. And then we have access to the knuckle and everything else. And then we take out the axle shaft. And here on the driver's side, it's easier. On the passenger side, we have to um, open up the FAD, which is not super difficult, um, but we have to do the, that step to avoid any damage. I put it up on jacks as high as possible so I can film as good as possible as well for you guys. Hope that it will work out. I will try to do it without dropping the tie rod and on the other side of the track. I hope I can do that. We'll see if that will work out. And here you can already see the ball train, uh, the upper one. So let's go from there. Alrighty, for, for, the, for the caliper or the brake mounts, we need a 21 millimeter to loosen up. It's pretty tight, so I'm using one of the flexible ratchets here, which work great. Taking out the screws now, there are two in total. You can't miss them. Okay, so next, before we can loosen, or before we should loosen at least, uh, the 12.13 millimeter, which are back here, three bolts. We have to take off this one first. So there's a T30 uh, retaining screw, torques. Um, let's get that off and then we should be able to get off the rotor and we can go from there. All right, I can tell you, this one was sitting pretty good on it. Um, this car is 80,000 miles. So you can see the rust, which was definitely helping to get it seated <laughs> in there. So it's some penetrating oil, spread it into the holes. That helped, I think, and then I'm using a rubber mallet to get it off. So from now on, we'll continue taking off the dust shield here. I think it's 10 millimeters, across, most likely taking off um, here as well. The speed sensor. And then we take off all the harness, at least with this bolt back here, and then get it off the way. So I'll do that now. I took off the bolt with a five millimeter. There was blue Loctite on it, so we see it. Good, but not too tight. And then wiggle around to get the speed sensor out uh, without damaging it. I'll pry a little bit out, maybe that helps. Yep, there we go. And we have it out. The next one will take the 13 millimeter bolt off back there. which only holds the harness in place. That's all. That should be all. So the next step will be taking off those 13 millimeter bolts, those ones. They are 12 point, so it's a different type. I uh, hope you have the right tool and it should be three in total, one here, one up there, and one on the other side. And I'll loosen them and take them out. Hopefully that will work quite easy. I sprayed them already with some penetrating oil just to make it easier. Hopefully, same I did spray some penetrating oil up here on the ball joint. Lower and upper, upper and lower. We'll see how that goes. All right, we got it loose. All through, all three bolts, we got them out. Let's see, it should not be too tight in. One thing you wanna make sure, because this is the entire assembly of the bearing as well as the axle shaft. So be careful when you pull it out. There's a seal somewhere inside where it slips through and you don't wanna damage it, so support um, the axle shaft when you pull it out. So just wanna give it a few taps to see that it's coming loose. Because mine is pretty good seated. There we 
we go. And then we have it. Now pulling it out, support it. it, has some weight to it. Here we go. There we are. Nice. Let me give you a little more close up view so you can see here up front. The surface is pretty dirty. Need to clean it before we put it back together as well as on the bearing itself. Um, then that's the drive shaft. You want to make sure that nothing goes in it. Here we have the knuckle right now. Um, so we're pretty good. What I want to do next is strapping the tie rod to the frame that it doesn't drop at all. It's a very sturdy one, I know, but it's still there's some weight to it because I don't want to disassemble it if possible. I'd like to avoid that. We'll see if it works out. And I did spray, as I mentioned already, the knuckle um, in between ball joint, stud, and the castle nut. Uh, I did spray some penetration oil to hopefully to the drops easier because that might also be seated very well together. We'll see if that works out. So next step is loosen the castle nuts or take the cutter, pin, cutter pins out. Take the cutter pins out, loosen the castle nuts, both loosen, not take them off completely and then see how easy or how difficult it is that it drops, as well as some straps to the tie rod and the frame. Okay, next we'll need 22 millimeter after getting the cutter pins out. The cutter pins were a pain, I can tell you that. Let's see how far we can get and how easy. Yep. The uh, castle nuts are pretty easy on, so you will see later in the torque spec, there is not a lot of torque on them, so keep that in mind. So now you want to make sure that it is secured with your strap so nothing is dropping really. And I'm using a dead blow hammer here in the middle because it's aluminum, be careful with that. Because there is also a sleeve in here, up there, which holds it better in place, I would think so. So we'll see that as well a bit when you get it loose. You might need some force for separating it. So I'll get back when I'm done with that. So we got them out, but it took a while. What I needed to do was swiveling it around, and that helped loosen it up, luckily. Uh, be careful because it's aluminum, so you don't want to damage it too much, but I had to use my hammer to get it loose. So, right now you see the top one is pretty good and stiff still. The low one has more play, but it's still also pretty good, so we'll see if changing that will help with the death wobble. We'll press out the top one first. So I actually just have to make sure, so I have to make sure that the cup which we put on underneath is touching the outside the axle itself and not pushing inside otherwise we won't get it loose yep looks like that one is good looks like we've used the OMG 14 I think that makes more sense, looks like, yeah. And then the OMT 11. That being said, we'll need to assemble it kind of this way. All right, so what you can see, this thing will be pushed from top down. So let's see if we can get a wrench in there, because my not super high lifted. We'll need a 22 millimeter. Yep, it's moving. And there it is. 
pop right out. Nice. Let's see what we can do in the bottom. The bottom seems to be sticking out more. Let's assemble the bottom. There we go. There we go. Like so. For the work. And I think the bottom has a slight angle to it. Just generally speaking. Plays it good in terms of. Oh, this one actually did good work to my pickleball. Let's see how far we can get with this. Or if at all. I guess I did let it rotate because then it touches the other side. Alright. Let's see how far we can get with this. And with the breaker bar as well. Feels like the lower one is easier. I'm not sure if that's just a feeling. I can already see it moving. There we go. Nice. Got it out. Next one's cleaning the surfaces here. And then we'll go back to the assemble and pressing it in. I'll show you which of the amplifiers I'm using for that one. All right, so with the lower ball turn, as mentioned, LWR is for lower. I hope you can see that here in the video. And uh, the instructions call out that the circ fitting should go towards the rear, slightly towards the middle. So that's one thing. You press it in from the bottom. So first the lower and I'm using the OMT 13 adapter plus an angle adapter because below here there's an angle and it's going getting tighter towards outside so I hope that when I place it here so this will fit up here when I place it like so I should have a pretty straight going up let's see if that works let me locate Try to get to put it in. They said um, crease is not necessary, but can be used. So I usually like to use crease, but I don't know. What do you think? What do you guys think? Would you crease it or not? So what I'm doing here is getting the press right here. It's going in here. Make sure whatever adapter you use that it's not interfering that it's not interfering with um, the boot or damaging anything like that. So mine looks pretty good in that regard. All right. Put this one on. Well, I hope that's it. Now we're going to tighten it again. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Nope, it's not. I think that's it. Holy cow.
looks good. Next one is the Sork fitting, inseling them. You don't have to crease them because they're pre-creased from the factory, but you can add one push if you need to. Next step is getting everything back together. Next step is to align the cotter pinholes. They should be perpendicular to, perpendicular to the axle. Yeah. Uh, all right, next step will be getting the sleeve back, like so, and the knuckle. That'll be interesting. Uh, you see the flat part, the flat part needs to go into the, against the knuckle, like so. That's what it was. And don't hammer on the castle nut, don't hammer the sleeve in. If you need to put in the sleeve separately, you need to tap in the sleeve itself, not with the threads. Otherwise you destroy it. Those are the Sunichu instructions. Tight fitting up here. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you might thread the thread. The threads, yeah. Yeah. Ooh! That's not. I think that's the only one. I don't know. It might already be up there. Twenty-two millimeter. 15 on the bottom. Hmm. It's just, it hasn't bottomed yet to the washer now it is. 15 bottom. 55. Next one is 55 on top. Fifty-five on top, and then thirty-five on the bottom. Now double check if you can put in the corner pins. If not, you have to tighten a little bit more, and only tighten, not loosen it. After cleaning with Scotch Brite and Pre-Clean. Putting some indices on. Putting it back in. We have to make sure installing to not destroy or break the seal. Oh wow, I, first try. That's new. <laughs> and I will clean those. Bolts first. Installing all the bolts. Use high strength Loctite, in that case red Loctite, regarding Synergy instructions. And So now you want to tighten it to 75 foot-pound. Nice. Next is cleaning this part, putting some anesthes on, putting the brake lever on, putting the brakes on, and then continue on the other side. Okay, before installing the brake caliper mount, by the way, 148 foot-pound. 
you also have to remember the speed sensor as well as the dust shield. That's something you have to do first, then install the rotor and then the cotter, not the cotter, that's wrong, the uh, little bolt here, the Torx, and I put some NDCs here as well, just that everything comes off super easy. And yeah, at the end, that's basically all on one side. Now we move over to the other side. I'll show the, the FAD, what we need to do there first. And then we'll continue. Alrighty, so we are under the car. And here you can see this little skip blade for the FAD. We need to take it off with, I believe, it might be 10 millimeter bolts, four, on, four in total. Then we have access, then we can take here this uh, plastic connector off as well. And then we have four bolts, which are probably 14 millimeter or something like that which are connected to you. The side you can see it, also four in total. So those are the next steps. It's harder to film down here, so I hope this gives you an idea. It's here on the passenger side. And uh, I'll do that now and show you what it looks afterwards, because it's minimal space here. Okay, so um, right now the FAD is hanging here. I put it on a bungee cord because I wasn't able to get the plug out without destroying it, so I wanted to keep it. And important is um, there's liquid coming out obviously so i have to make sure here yeah. have a little pen underneath but what's important and let me try to get this here hope you can see it when you zoom in here this little thing you can move around right and it's important that you push it all the way to the left later when you close this again uh, you see those little thingies they must align with this um with this uh, little wheel bag in here very important because that's that's what it engages that on the disengages it very important so it's hard to see um took me a little time because it's definitely the bolts were seated they were really good in there so yeah and there's a little gasket gasket here as well so you have to see and clean it up and ideally you have a new gasket uh i ordered one but it did not arrive yet so i'll continue with outside work i'm gonna say outside work thing of the brake caliper rotor, clipper, rotor, and we'll continue like we did on the other side.
So you saw the passenger side was going super quick. Um, basically you do the same like on the driver's side. I didn't want to waste the time too much. And also I showed you, I did the upper ball joint first, didn't align it correctly and had to reseat it. So I pushed it out again. Luckily I didn't push it in too much. So I was okay with that, but be aware of that. So take your time, just be super careful because you don't want to destroy the knuckle when you push it in because then you will need the knurled ball joints, which of course Synergy also has. Link in the description below, by the way. What I want to say after a couple of months now, um, I think it's more than a couple of months because I recorded a video early this year and I drove the car with my stock tires and I decided to get bigger tires. So when I had the stock tires on, I felt like there was not a big or huge change. It was still good and solid. And I was able to see, and maybe you saw it in the video as well, I was able to wiggle around by hand the old uh, factory ball joints. You should not be supposed to do that that easy at least. I was able to push around the Synergy ball joints as well, but I needed way more force to do that. So yes, there is some improvement. There is definitely improvement going forward with bigger tires. And if it would solve my bump steer slash death wobble, no. Not completely, but it definitely helped. So I heard, uh, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on, a lot of information. The next, maybe the last, hopefully the last thing I have to look into is my aluminum steer box. No video out yet, working on that one yet, uh, working on that one pretty soon as well, I guess. Don't know if I will make a video about it, since this is really trial and error, um, but I don't know if I will make a video about it. Uh, looks like I can do it by myself DIY, but we'll see. Um, sadly, I don't have a good dealer here, so otherwise I would give it to the dealer and let them install it, but there's really, at least in uh, the area where I live, no, not recommended. I only had bad experience. Anyways, don't want to bore you with that stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it's helpful for you. I hope I got the steps captured, which you are looking for. There are tons of other videos out there. Um, put them together, what you need. I hope this helps. Uh, I would like to see you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you like that stuff. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, it doesn't work today. Cheers.